The name's Malcolm. I've been part of the gang since I could remember. Working the short con, doing errands, that was my specialty. My dad Duncan used to be the Don, the boss. He was a great man. Strict and ruthless to his enemies, yet kind to his allies. He turned our family into one of the top and most respected mobs out here. We were the Scottish Mafia. Well, we used to be, until Macbeth turned to the devil, that bastard. I'm here to tell his story, at least what's left of it. Flashback, it's 1959. The family was finishing up some business with some friends of ours. We were collecting on a loan from some of our clients. The Alfonso brothers were never really good at paying debts. They owed us money, and they were four months overdue. We have never managed to get a penny out of them until one of our guys, Macbeth, paid them a visit. He made them an offer they couldn't refuse. He told them it would either be their brains or their signature on that check. A hundred fifty grand. All cash. When I heard the news, I reported it straight to the dawn. The man was pleased and promoted Macbeth to the new underboss and cut him a bit of the dough. I admit, I was a bit jealous. But I knew Macbeth was one of the gang's most valuable assets. Macbeth invited the gang to his place to celebrate the victory. Champagne, gambling, drinking, our usual. Everyone was having a great time. We had not a care in the world. My dad, <laughs> he had a bit too much to drink though. Not that it mattered. We all had a bit too much to drink. However, there was a heavy storm and we stayed the night. That's when things began to get fishy. I was concerned for my father's safety, especially since he had quite a list of formidable enemies out to get him. I always feared that one day, he would get in trouble and I wouldn't be there to save his life. Little did I know, I would face my greatest fear that night. I was the first to find my father in the morning, murdered in cold blood. Several gashes in his chest, blows blood soaked. The Don's golden watch was missing, the heirloom and greatest symbol of my family's honor. The knife was at the scene of the crime. It was the same model the family always used. It had to be one of us. I knew it. The question was, who? I surveyed the room for suspects. Was it Macduff? No, not him. He and my dad were the greatest of friends. He was never in it for the money or power. So what was there to gain from murder? Macbeth? Of course not. He just dealt with one of our most important cases and always did what was needed to be done. A team player he was, not a murderer. And what of my brother Donald Bain? No, if anything our father favored him as a son more than he did me. Murder would not solve a thing. Nevertheless, Macbeth spoke for all of us. He pulled out his gun and shot Johnny and Timothy, the two new recruits. He was angry and suspected them of the crime, saying they could have been spies of the Alfonso brothers. I could see the pain in his eyes, but I knew those kids, they wouldn't have the guts to do it, let alone speak to the Don in person. The rest of us seemed to follow along and accept Macbeth's words. I though was skeptical of his claims. If my work in the grifting business taught me one thing, it was to never trust anyone, even friends can take you as a fool. In the end, 
I couldn't make a guess who was truly guilty of my father's death, nor was I willing to spend the time to find out. I fled the city with my brother Donald Bay and left him a note, telling him that I would be hiding with my allies in the English gang. What else was I to do? Of course, all suspicion was put on us. To me, the gang was dead. Now in London, I spent most of my time just finding things to do. I cheated a few fellows out of their money, made some extra cash, all on my own. Three card Monty, the oldest trick in the book, well, one of them anyways. It was a quick con on the streets I always used to swindle easy marks. Despite separating myself from the Scottish Mafia, I still felt inclined to keep a close eye on the family. I received news from Scotland through a trusted acquaintance of mine. Macbeth was appointed the new Don, replacing my father, and had reportedly gone insane as well. Well, isn't that just special? She was also hallucinating and ranting on about the impossible. My friend told me he was always scrubbing his hands, saying he couldn't clean off some blood off his palms that wasn't there, laughing maniacally. Apparently he talked about his good friend Banquo, his faithful hitman. The problem was, Banquo died only a few days back, and that imaginary blood on his hands? It belonged to, well, let's just say Macbeth admitted to his first murder within the family. I decided to stay with the family of Seward, who was my uncle and Don of the English gang. I needed his help, and asked him for a favor. He was a cold-blooded one. He let me stay for a few nights and agreed to assist me in taking back my place as the rightful Don of the Scottish Mafia, though not before I signed a contract giving him the money we earned from the Alfonso brothers. It would be a heavy loss, though I wasn't going to let a lunatic like Macbeth run my family. Seward was a cruel one as well, always thinking he was made of more bulk and brawn than he was of a man. I was lucky. Most of the time he let out his anger on his son and not at me for the sake of formality. Seward yelled at him constantly and beat him like a mule, but I didn't complain. After all, it was better to let that boy have it rather than me. A few days passed, and Macduff arrived here in England, telling me Macbeth had slain his entire family in cold blood soon after he had fled from Scotland. The poor friend, he looked in dire need of assistance. Together, along with Seward and his son, we planned to remove Macbeth from his office, much like he had done to my father. This was it, the battle I had been waiting for. It began well enough. Macbeth's supporters seemed to have fled, and we outnumbered him 4-1. to one. Though that didn't seem to stop him. All he gave us was a spray of bullets, and started ranting like a madman. That crazy bastard mentioned something about witches and prophecies, and all that garbage. Ha! And I thought he was fit to beat the dawn. Young Seward and Macduff flanked Macbeth through an alternate entrance, trying to take him down by surprise. However, he was no pushover. A couple seconds in and Seward's son was dead. Only moments after, Macduff was shot down, badly wounded. With those two down, and us under suppressing fire, we felt as though all hope was lost. Until... It was all over. With the tyrant dead, I was appointed the new head of the Scottish Mafia, becoming what my father once was. I was given Macbeth's fedora and my father's gold watch. After a long two months and the loss of some close friends, I was glad that this was all finally over. Well that's my story. Good one, ain't it? 
Now I am the dawn and peace has been restored to the Scottish Mafia. Things are going well, far better than Macbeth's reign of terror ever was or ever will be. But Macbeth was right about one thing. Ending another man's life for power was gratifying. Call me evil if you will, but I really did relish Macbeth's demise. After all, this whole affair was to satisfy my business partner Seward. I not only resolved the previous animosity between Macbeth and I, but I also gained further trust from the English gang. I paid Seward the money he deserved and let him return to England. I must admit, it was a bit sad to say farewell to a good friend, but it was just business. <laughs>